Today's service is dedicated to my grandfather, Charles Edward McCool. Today would have been his 93rd birthday. So that's what that little video was at the very beginning. I appreciate y'all sharing that with me. Thank you. Thank you. He was a wonderful man. So, good afternoon. A few years ago, a news article came across the wires of the Associated Press. It concerned the plight of a Swedish woman who had a rare eating disorder. Because of her disease, she was forced to eat 30 pounds of food a day just to stay alive. The old amounts, the old amounts of food, the old amounts of food she used to eat couldn't sustain her physically anymore. She would die if she simply ate three normal meals. She always needed more. Now that's sad. Some of us probably fantasize about eating a significant amount of food without gaining weight, but I don't believe any of us would attempt to eat 30 pounds. I wonder how much food the average offensive lineman in the National Football League eats. The heaviest player in the NFL history was a, a giant named Aaron Gibson, who weighed in at 410 pounds while playing offensive lineman for the Lions, Cowboys, Bears, and Bills over his five-season career. Now, I doubt that he reached that size by eating three normal meals a day. Do you? <laughs> Remember, some of these behemoths you see on TV on Sunday afternoons are not only big, but they're also quite athletic. So they can afford to feed themselves more than any of us might ever dream of. Of course, some people have a more difficult time resisting the lure of food than others. Radio commentator Paul Harvey once told about a man named Eric Edmonds who was determined to lose weight. He went to Humana Hospital Bayside in Virginia, uh, Beach, Virginia, and had his stomach stapled to shrink his, shrink his ample girth. But within 48 hours after the surgery, he snuck out of his room and raided the hospital refrigerator and <laughs> ate so much, he burst his staples. Subsequently, Mr. Edmonds sued the hospital for a quarter million dollars for failure to keep its refrigerator locked. <laughs> Paul Harvey didn't say whether Edmonds won his suit or not. In my research, I did not run into an, into an item that you might find interesting. Did you know that there are, uh, is a museum of burnt food located in Arlington, Massachusetts? Did you hear that? A museum of burnt food located in Arlington, Massachusetts. This museum is home to around 50,000 specimens of charred food, including over 2,000 items in the Hall of Burnt Toast alone. <laughs> this is true. The museum attracts around 25,000 visitors a year. There's no accounting for taste. No pun, no pun intended. Amen. <laughs> and here is something that, you won't, that won't surprise you. According to one source, the size of the average meal served in a restaurant in comparison to a meal prepared at home the restaurant meal will be 170% larger. Want to lose weight? Don't eat out so much. Amen. Food is very important in our lives, isn't it? Some of you will agree with the wit who said, coffee makes it possible to get out of bed in the morning. Chocolate makes it worth it. <laughs> we all have our weaknesses. Last week, we celebrated the ordination of, of Deacon Partain. So we missed out on the scripture readings where Jesus feeds 5,000 hungry men and an unknown number of women and children with just five, barely, five barley loaves and two small fish. What a thrilling day that must have been. Naturally, the crowd that was fed was amazed. In fact, says the writer John, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who has come, to the come into the world. Then he adds, Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king of force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Jesus had no intent of becoming an earthly king. What a demotion that would be for him. Obviously, I mean, come on. It is obvious by now that the reason Jesus told some of the people that he healed, uh, not to share it with anybody else, is that if stories of his healing powers got around, he knew people would try to lure him from his real mission. He did not come to build an earthly kingdom, at least not at that time. Healing people as much as he had compassion on the people whom, who came to him was not his real mission. His real mission was to spread the good news of the kingdom of God. His real purpose was to train his disciples to carry on the work of the kingdom. His real purpose was to show people in his own life the very nature of God. So, under the cover of darkness, after feeding the 5,000, he crossed to the other side of the lake of Capernaum. But many of the people got in boats and came after him. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said, asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? <laughs> right? Jesus said, Jesus avoided answering them. He said, very truly, I tell you, you are not looking for me. 
not because not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for the food that spoils, he said, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for on him God the Father has placed the seal of approval. Do you know what it is to hunger for the food that never spoils? That is, the bread of life. Not the bread you buy at Kroger's or Walmart or Whole Foods. Do you hunger for the bread only Christ can supply? You know what physical hunger is. The hunger pains that most of us have known have only been a minor inconvenience, but we do know a little about physical hunger. Some of us barely finish lunch before we start thinking about the evening meal. (laughs) I read recently that the normal typical person spends 35,000 hours of his or her lifetime eating. Mm. That's right, 35,000 hours, which if you do the math works out to eight years of eating nonstop for 12 hours a day. Obviously, we get hungry a lot. Do we get hungry for that which will truly satisfy us? We know about physical hunger, but do we know about spiritual hunger? Many of us have a deep emptiness within that nothing physical will ever fill. It is a longing to be connected to our Creator. There is something missing from our lives. Something is missing, and in its place, we have substituted all sorts of other things, material things, power, sex, accomplishment, but none of these ever really satisfies. We always want more. Some of you will remember when a young man named Boris Becker was at the very top of the tennis world. Most of you will not hear. (laughs) Did you know Becker was at the same time on the brink of suicide? In his own words, he said, I had won Wimbledon twice before. Once as the youngest player, I was rich. I had all the material possessions I needed. It's the old song of movie stars and pop stars who commit suicide. They have everything, and yet they are so unhappy. I had no inner peace. I was a puppet on a string. Now, of course, Becker is not the only celebrity to feel that sense of emptiness. There have been many, many more. You don't have to be a celebrity to feel that emptiness. As someone has said, the echoes of a hollow life pervade our culture. One doesn't have to read many contemporary biographies to find the same frustration and disappointment. Jack Higgins, author of such successful novels as The Eagle Has Landed, was asked what he would like to have known as a boy. He answered that when you get to the top, there's nothing there. That's been the experience of many high achievers. When you get to the top, there's nothing there. Dr. James E. Rimmer tells about singer Andy Gibb, the British singer, songwriter, performer, and teen idol. Gibb was barely 19 and fresh from Australia when his first single record, I Just Want to Be Your Everything, hit the top of the charts. He was nominated for two Grammys that year and made nearly two million dollars, adding more than a million the next. Gibbs came to international prominence in the late 1970s with six singles that reached the top ten in the United States. He is the only solo performer ever to have his first three singles, Everything, Love is Thicker Than Water, and Shadow Dancing, top the charts. He sold some 15 million records worldwide by the time he was 21. Then, as easily as the money came, it went. Much of it for cocaine. Gibb had sought treatment in 1985 and, by all accounts, had finally put drugs behind him when he returned uh, returned from L.A. to Miami and adopted home of his older B.G. brother early in 1986. But by by that time, his fortune had gone, and he had filed for bankruptcy. His debt totaled $1.5 million. And then, just five days after turning 30, Andy Gibb was dead. The official cause of his death was listed as heart failure, but doctors say that Even a small amount of cocaine can permanently damage the heart. What happened to Andy Gibb? Friends say that he had a great emptiness within. It's so sad to see a promising young life snuffed out like that. But Andy Gibb is not alone. Neither is Boris Becker. Many people today look deep, deep within their hearts and find nothing but a deep emptiness there. They ask questions like, why are we here? Where are we headed? What does it all mean? For many people, there are no satisfying answers to those questions. Many years ago, there was a brilliant French writer who spoke for many of the best educated young people of his, of his generation. His name was Albert Camus. 
Chemist's full uh, view, chemist, chemist's view was that life is ultimately absurd. There's no reason to life, he concluded. No meaning, no purpose behind it all. His contention was that it was only was was his contention was that it was foolishness for any person to try to predict the way their life will go. We were at the mercy of blind chance. Chemist, Chemist's own death seemed to have been a weird fulfillment of his contention about life. It was his plan to board a train for Paris, but by but in uh, by mm, sorry. I'm just stuttering over all my words. It was his plan to board a train to Paris, but influenced by a comment of a friend, he took his car instead. Not long thereafter, his mangled, motionless body was found sprawled on the back seat of his car after he had attempted to swing a curve at 90 miles an hour. The brightest light in French literature, a Nobel, Pre a Nobel Prize winner, went out in a moment, and the Parisian newspapers carried this headline, Absurd. If we believe that we are dependent solely upon reason, we too must admit that Camus was right, that life is ultimately absurd, that there is no reason in it. About the time Camus was writing, Pro uh, Professor Paul Tillich, Tillich was reminding us that three fears have gripped mankind. Before the Christian era, it was the fear of death. During the Middle Ages, it was the fear of guilt. Today, Tillich says, it's the fear of meaninglessness. The mad search for escape, for nirvana, for death itself, is the result of that fear. There is no joy. There is no fun. There is no peace. There is no aspirin. There is no hope. There is only alcohol or some other form of narcotic. If life is absurd, absurd, no matter which way we turn, we will turn out to be. It will turn out to be the wrong one. That was the basic philosophy of Albert Camus. It is sad that Camus did not turn to Jesus. He was to fill this emptiness, this meaninglessness that Christ came into the world. I am the bread of life, says Jesus. You can search all over this earth to find that, no, that, that one thing that is mean, missing in your life, but until you feed on Jesus, you will never be satisfied. Pastor Rodney Buchanan tells of standing in line at Walmart one day, and a woman and her young son were ahead of him. The boy was unhappy because he saw something he wanted, and his mother was not allowing him to get it. His disappointment began to crescendo, and she suddenly blurted out, What can I tell you, Billy? Life sucks, and then you die. <laughs> Imagine having that as a truth on which you were operating your life writes Buchanan, the kind of truths we tell ourselves and our children are molding us and the future generation. The truth is that God created a good world, and life is good when we live it for God and base our lives on his word. Amen. When we live away from God, Buchanan writes, life sucks, and then you die. But when you live your life for God, Life makes sense because it is based on the truth. And because your life is based on the truth, it works. Amen. Dr. Buchanan is right. Building a life on God does work. I am the bread of life, said Jesus. What does that mean to you? Best-selling author Max Lucado, Lucado gives us a new interpretation of the meaning of that phrase. He writes, the grain to bread process is a demanding one. The seed must be planted before it can grow. When the grain is ripe, it must be cut down and ground into flour before it can become bread. It must pass through the oven. Bread is the end result of planting, harvesting, and heating. Now Jesus endured an identical process, writes Lucado. He was born into this world. He was cut down, bruised, and beaten on the thresh threshing floor of Calvary. He passed through the fire of God's wrath for our sake. He suffered because of other sins, the righteous one for the unrighteous ones. He went through it all, was put to death, and then made alive to bring us to God. Bread of life. Jesus lived up to that title, but an unopened loaf does a person no good. Amen. Have you received the bread? Asked Lucado. Have you received God's forgiveness? Those are questions you and I need to answer this day. The world is still hungry for true bread. Christ is that bread. Sir, the people said in response to Christ's teaching, give us the bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And that's true. The greatest need that each of us has is to feed on Christ. Amen. Amen. Info at DallasULC.com. Info at DallasULC.com. If you want to, um, uh, I'm sorry, that's not the right one. Uh, info, it is another, that's another email address, by the way. If you need any information on the church, feel free to email us there. Pray at DallasULC.com. If you have prayer requests, either um, you want to keep them private or you want them um, publicly stated for everybody, we, we pray every day here at Dallas First Life Church. <laughs> And on Sundays, if you want it on a Sunday, we can put it in uh, in our Sunday prayers as well. Just you can also remain anonymous, or you know, say your name, whichever. Just let us know. Also, if you want to dedicate a service to somebody for some reason, for a, or to memorialize them, or for a gift, or for Father's Day, whatever, you know, I mean, Father's Day just passed, but you get the idea for whatever. Um, for a nominal, uh, a, a a small donation to the church, we would be glad to. Um, to dedicate that service. Today's service was dedicated to my grandfather, um, Charles McCool. Great man, um, died way too young. Uh, yeah, he was only seventy-eight when he died. He died in nineteen ninety-eight. That's a, that was close to the same age my grandfather. It was he tough. Was, my grandfather was sixty-nine. Right. Know. Granted, he had a good. I mean, this this man grew up. His his immigrant family moved here from Lebanon. Um, his parents moved here from Lebanon, and he. I mean, he. <laughs> Made a multi-million-dollar business. I mean, you, I mean, how do people do that? I don't know. I, I, it amazes me. How how do you start that? You know, and, and he just. Yeah. I, I would have no way done, but in all the pictures, he looks really full of life. And really he was very full of life. Yeah. He, he looks like he would be an interesting person. To, to you know, know. before he, most of my grand my 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 cousins don't remember this because I was the firstborn grandson, grandchild, and when I was you know a kid, he still drank beer and smoked big old cigars, you know, and and just he was to play poker. You know, eventually he had to, he had uh, severe diabetes and he had to uh, quit the cigars and quit the beer. So I think his life changed a little bit. But he was still, you know, he, we used to go to Galveston every year. And about this time, in fact, we would be in Galveston this weekend um, uh, as a family. Because we always celebrated his birthday in Galveston. And we'd be on the beach. Well, first we'd be on the way there. And, and, and it was, you know, we're going to say, we're going to go pee in the ocean. Let's go pee in the ocean. That was a big thing. Go pee in the ocean. And the other thing was, we get out there on the beach and just everybody sit back and relax. And he goes, grandson. I wonder what the poor people are doing. <laughs> and I'd say, oh, I, I don't know, Granddaddy. Boy. They're fighting, fussing, and fixing flats. <laughs> he did. He he. Um, yeah. He was an amazing man. He he died of uh, of his, his basically the muscle around his heart gave way, and there's no way at that time to repair that once the muscle around the heart is gone. I don't know. So, um, a wonderful man. Um, he grew up, he had a polio as a child. Uh, grew up in, so he had a walk, and, and if, if he, all of his stomach muscles were basically eaten away by the polio. So, naturally, he would walk like this if, if that was the case, but he was too proud to walk like that, so he would kick back and walk like this. And I all the kids, we'd all make fun of him, you know, this little shuffle, you know. <laughs> but that was, uh, that was one of the Christmas parties of the old Continental Engraving, one of his first companies. I was his grandson. It was, it was a lot of fun. Very, very neat man. Very, very caring for his family. He loved his family very, very much. And um, actually probably gave us all too many chances. <laughs> didn't, didn't help us out too much because he gave us too many chances. He coddled us a little too much. But anyway, enough about him. I love him very much. He was my grandfather. And um, I still think about him quite often. He, losing him really changed the family. He was the, the strength of the family. And it, everything kind of changed after that. And I miss those days. So... <laughs> Did y'all know we had a podcast? Can you believe that? We've got a podcast. <laughs> you need to check it out. If you haven't checked it out yet, our podcast. Um, we are on. What happened to your little graphics? It, 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 oh. Okay, so we're on Radio Public, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Pocket Casts, Apple Podcasts, Overcast, Stitcher, CastBox, and Spotify. you got to make us a nice free animation to just yeah. toss all those out anywhere... Yeah. You can listen to your podcast. That's true. I mean, basically, you go online, do a Google search for Your Path with Bishop Mark, Your Path with Bishop Mark, and you'll find us. Even Alexa knows who I am. Yeah. I talked to her last night. I can tell her to play me, and she tells me about the whole thing, and the, it's really kind of cool. Yeah. It's so, you can't get away from us if you want to. I'm telling you. Well, the, the specific skill that we, that we installed through her, we, we've got to come up with that 
what what that specific name was. It's called it, any, um, any, any cast. Any cast. The, the, so it, it's, it's really cool. Turn, it, turn her up. It, well, it, it, turn her up. Let's see if we can do it. I, I've got it unplugged actually because it, it was, was it messing messing with things. Yes. Okay, well, because it, it says the description that what, we put in. Right. What you say is what you say is um, Alexa, uh, ask any pa- any cast to any pod. It's any, any pod. pod. Sorry, ask yes. any pod to play your path with Bishop Mark, and she goes. Your path with Bishop Mark. Uh, <laughs> someone else has Alexa forgot. decided. <laughs> so she goes, your path with Bishop Mark in this episode. It's like like a soap opera kind of thing. It's really funny, but it's really cool. I'm glad that we're getting the message out there. We're are, we're you know, we're still getting a lot of hits on that. A lot of people watching or listening. Yeah, our, our average listens are slowly going up for every single episode. So we clearly are getting more people every episode that comes out mm. now. So that's that's. Quite important. We're not. We're not. That we're losing anybody. People no. are liking what we're doing. No, I. I we haven't had. Here, right. We like that's what I was going. That's where I was going to <laughs> next. By the way, so uh, since we do have those extra followers, I've got to be mic'd over here now. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, uh, it's feedback at dallasulc.com. Feedback at dallasulc.com is mostly for our uh, YouTube uh, YouTubers out there and our podcast listeners. We want to hear from you. I'm yeah. gonna say every week. I can't see you. And I want to know what you're feeling about it and what you're thinking about it. Um, so just, you know, find us on Facebook, find us on Facebook also, uh, Facebook slash, um, uh, Dallas ULC, Facebook slash Dallas ULC. Okay. That's it. You can get in touch with us folks. There's all, we're out there everywhere. All you do is look for Dallas Universal Life Church online. We're there. Desperately want to hear from you guys. <laughs> Let us know what we're doing. Let us know how we're doing. If you don't like something, tell us. I mean, yeah. I can't read your minds, especially across that, you know, the, the universe. Can't even see your faces. <laughs> last Sunday we had a, uh, or like, uh, last Sunday we had a, Fantastic celebration. We had the um, ordination of Deacon Partain, and I thank each and every one of you for making that a success. It was a, a beautiful service. Um, I was still quite under the weather, but we made it through it. Um, you, know, you, you made it through quite, quite well. Well, thank you. And I also like again to con- congratulate uh, Deacon Partain for, for uh, taking on that call, which is not an easy call to take on, that life of service, especially when you have to work under me. <laughs> Amen. Right? <laughs> So thank you again, and welcome. And uh, like I said last week, I, I, I expect to have many long years of service out of you. <laughs> long, 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 long. All right. I'm stuck in it now, so. <laughs> Do you have anything else? That's been all for me. What do you like? What do you not like? What do you want to keep? What do you want to get rid of? Um, I'd like to be the first to say something because... Excuse me. That's what we're here for, Gavin. All right. Um, one of the things that I could definitely relate to was the... How okay. kind of... Sure. It lasted all service. It did. It did. <laughs> we're going to work, work on that one. Go ahead, Gavin. I loved how it kind of hinted a little bit on gluttony, just a little bit, in a way. What did... Um, whenever they were they were fed on the whenever they were physically fed and their mm-hmm. physical bodies were completely nourished and they were full and then they still went Wait more yeah and but in a way how can I put this the Keep fact on. that they actually wanted they sought out Jesus Christ so they could actually promote him or try to make him a king, I believe. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, keep talking, keep talking. Mm-hmm. Promote him or make him a king. To, to make him a king of the physical world. Yeah, of, yeah. of the physical world and everything like that. Um, Jesus didn't want that. It also not only touched on that, but it, I wouldn't necessarily say gluttony, but scratch that. Not gluttony, but humility. Because mm-hmm. that's in... Jesus' mind, like, he didn't stick around, like, you know, for adoration and praises. He so that was, he, he, that was, he was that wasn't the reason for what he did. Right. He's continued to carry on the word of his father and to... Uh, oh, it's okay, let it ring. Yeah. 
to carry on the word of his father and to preach the word. Right. That's yeah. what he came there for. To spread the, the word about the kingdom of God. That's yes. correct. But honestly, the gluttony, you, you kind of were right because the, 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 the followers were trying to be gluttonous in keeping him here yeah. to do all these miracles for them yeah. rather than allowing him to do his work. That's what they were trying to chase after him for. Yeah. He they started were, getting that superstar status, right? right yeah. Which he didn't want. He wasn't here for that. It wasn't what it's about, you know. And in fact, he told a lot of people that he healed and and performed miracles in front of. Hey, don't tell anybody about this. Keep it to yourself. Oh. Okay. And I think that's that's something that touches on the basis of whenever we do something that is Christ-like, or whenever we walk in the way of the Lord, we shouldn't. I think. Well, shouldn't that, we always be walking in the way of the Lord? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we do our best to walk in the way of Christ, yes. Do we? Well, not always, now, to okay, be honest. Okay, thank you. To be quite frank, we, not all of us... No, we don't. We're sinners. Actions yes. are louder. Actions are... Absolutely. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, that's why I stick to what, I, what my original saying is like, we are wonderfully imperfect beings. We are imperfect, yeah. I think it says on my, on my Facebook page, it says, perfectly imperfect. Mm-hmm. We were made in God's image. And... Even though he is perfection. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing that actually, speaking on the topic of perfect, that actually brings me to the other topic, which is what happens once you reach the top? What is there that motivation? Mm-hmm. What happens once you reach the top? Like, where's that motivation? What, <coughs> if you're already perfect, then you no longer have anything to strive for. You have nothing to learn. And that wasn't even really brought up then. He was just talking about nothing being there. Yeah. yeah. You know? I mean, it just, it hinted on the topic and it made me think about that. And it's like, which uh, flowed into what you were speaking about, living a life for God. Right. You know? And even... even living a life for God, you never do reach to the top, reach to the top do you, when you're alive? Right. Right. Yeah. You don't really get there. Yeah. And even then, God God is the one at the top, at the top ultimately. Right. right. <laughs> you have that... Con- it's having that constant motivation, that constant... Drive. Yes, and something to strive for. Mm-hmm. And just the fact that we have that and we have an understanding, loving, um, all caring father who, you know, who sets the example for us and his son, Jesus Christ, who he sent so that we might find a path through him. Mm-hmm. I mean, that path is no longer blocked anymore like it used to be, like... Blocked. Mm, we don't have to... Not necessarily blocked, but... Hindered. It, 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 it hindered. It's well, still hindered, believe me. Well, we didn't have... Before no. Jesus Christ was here, we didn't have that path. That because before hindered. Jesus Christ, it was just death. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We really didn't have a, a promise of an of a, of a mm-hmm. afterlife. It wasn't there. Nope. You lived, you returned to the earth. <clears throat> there you go. And that's all there was to it. And with the coming of Jesus Christ, we came the the new the new life, the new, the new birth, covenant. the new covenant, and that and that, that promise of a life forever, the eternal crown. I actually found this one word in in, in our first reading interesting. The, mm-hmm. the way they they said, "Why have you despised the word of the Lord?" Rather than, "Why have you forsaken?" or or any any other turn of phrase. It was okay. It was it was interesting interesting word translated into that didn't it yeah and it, it makes a it a complete almost a completely different way of, of saying what you what he did against the Lord at that point yeah they weren't just making a little mistake they were right. actually hated they, what they, they were doing they hearing. intentionally mm-hmm. chose to do that mm-hmm. and that that definitely makes they frames it in a much better broader sense that that is much more important I think than, than that, any other way it helps to understand and. One of the things that I agree with you on completely on that because to add on to that, just the fact the way they phrased it and everything they said, it helps you to understand that whenever we do something that is unchristlike or whatever, that especially back in the day, if that was basically you were disrespecting your father, your lord. That was like slapping him in the face. It still is. It, it, exactly. And so Thank God, like, the punishments aren't as harsh as they were back then. And God's not exactly fair, is he? <laughs> no. Well, he's loving, but he's not fair. He's not fair. Let me tell you something. God punishes us 
you know, I've, I've told you this story before. God tells me, people tell me all the time, God's not fair. He's not fair what he's doing to me. And I look around and say, yeah, you're right. God's not fair. Because if, if he had been fair, none of us would be here today. Right, he would exactly. go, we'd all be you know, ruined. Get yeah. away from me. Yeah. You know? Up you keep mm-hmm. sinning and, 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 and being blasphemous. I'm going to stop creating you people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when I send you everything in the world first I give you a garden and tell you not to eat one fruit and what happens you screw up yeah. and then you, you, you know I tell you this and you do that I tell you and come back to me and I tell you this you do that I send you prophets I send you kings I send I you whatever you, you want I give you ten whole rules I send you my son <laughs> and we still sin so how about that filling the emptiness within with this bread of life this cup of salvation well the, this is it shows why bread and wine is such a perfect analogy for for this lesson. In, in what way? We, most, especially with Americans, a lot of people love to overeat. They love to mm-hmm. overindulge themselves. We're the most obese country in the world. And mm-hmm. then, and then, like in the story, the, it turns around, and that woman has to overindulge in order Can to you stay alive. Having that to eat thirty be, pounds of meat, of food, of food a day. That, that would just be gross. Because I mean, we get tired of food. As it is now, <laughs> and expensive. <laughs> Think about how much money that would be every day. Yeah. <laughs> I want to add something to that. What, what, what did you ask again? Exactly how you asked that? Uh, I said, "What do you feel about the, the the bread of life and the cup of our salvation being filling that emptiness within us?" What's crazy about the the way you asked that is that I came here really hungry. <laughs> uh, first off, and then secondly, I'm leaving here with the fulfillment of my grandfather being here. That's fantastic. During our, during our service. I'm totally not hungry. I'm totally fulfilled. I'm satisfied with the upcoming battle I'm facing with college. You know, I I enjoy that. A lot of times, the fulfillment, that fulfillment of we a lot of times we we eat to try and fill that void, Mm -hmm. and we're eating the wrong thing. That's what we're talking about in the scripture today. You've got to eat the right thing. You still got to eat regular food. (laughs) (laughs) Can't go not eat regular food. You can't just live on Jesus alone. <laughs> that's, that's what I wanted to, to bring to light. It's a, it's a, it's a it, hunger. And those endorphins are flowing. In a different way. <laughs> those endorphins are flowing. It fills you up and kind of gotten you. It's kind of like, you know, it's just your stomach kind of shrinks up everything because you're yeah. feeling the other thing right now. Papa so put his hand on my shoulder and there said, you go. you're doing right, son. Good you know, it, it, nothing happens by chance. I mean, right. Everything is, has some sort of reason. I believe that. And, you know. Just that one thing about the service today being dedicated to my grandfather triggered that in you. I think that's wonderful. You know, that was the only thing you got. Great, incredible. great. Because and believe it, believe it. They're there. Yeah. They're watching over you. They're with that. you more often than you think. They were here okay? today. They, they are. They're around. And you don't get away with anything. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could. I was. I, I could tell this was going to be an emotional day from from this morning. You started playing that music and. For some reason, that was just getting to me this morning. So, just the regular church music I played. Yeah, my morning playlist. Yeah. Well, also the song for, on your grandfather's video. Is that not a gorgeous song? It really was. I mean, it's about you know. Can I can I find you find a way to bring you back home to me? You know, is there a road? Mm-hmm. Tell me where to go. You know. Oh. Um, that's what brought my papa down here today. There you go. That was written. That's one of my first videos I've ever done. Um, you know, I, and I I do a lot of video work a lot of times for therapy. So I do with some, you know, I've got several of my mother and then I've got my grandfather and just people. That's very cathartic. It is. Yeah. It, it helps me to work through things. And I can watch them cry and do my thing. And, that, and that's the other thing is that you'll, you'll make videos in the good times and then that becomes the, the catharsis if, mm. if, if in oftentimes when something else occurs. But we all got to die. Somebody else has a different story. We all got to die. And I think it's important that well, everything, relationships and, and friendships. What, all things what die. Yeah. yeah. All things come to an end. Yes, Tim. I was going to ask you maybe uh, there was like a, a sentence at the end of the video that said... Um, to bring you back home to me? No, no, no. no. Um, I do, but I do not approve or I... Um, oh, oh, oh yeah. at the end. What did that mean? There is a poem. I was going to ask. That, that was... That was you look it up. It's called, I just feel, I know, but I do not approve. Just type that okay. in. I'm going to read this poem to you. Okay. There's a, a beautiful marble bench that we put out at my grandfather's graveside. In fact, there's another video that has it on there about my mother and Daryl. If you want to find it, under go to Mark Daniel USA on YouTube. Oh, I can do it real quick. Why don't I do that? I'll just let you hear it. Because, yeah, because you've got this uh, What's there. your name? Um, uh, Molly Garris? Who's Molly Garris? Oh, of course. Is it John Crawford? I think John Crawford reads this. Okay. This oh, video. Let me pull it up real quick. Not Mommy Dearest. No more wire hangers. And it's, it's kind of a scratchy recording. It's old, but it's really kind of moving. 
Uh, but anyway, we have a, a marble uh, bench at Grand Hill, at the McCool site in, at Calvary Hill Cemetery. It's got this poem on it. I'm going to let you hear it. Let me pull it up here. Hmm. You should be sorry. You should so, be ashamed. Oh, let me get my multi board displays here. Here we go. Th that. And so you do, that one? we do this, Yeah. and then that makes it full screen. Okay, make it full screen now. And play it. That subwoofer for sure is working overtime back That's there. Good. You can tell how old it is because they didn't have widescreen on it. THNs. Mm -hmm. Digitally mastered for optimal audio and visual performance. <laughs> oh, look at that face. Can you tell that this is where the intros really started? <laughs> oh, is that you? Yep. No wonder you look so devilish. Them lips. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even no, have that bow tie. Turn it up. Childhood is not from birth to a certain age. This is not it. There's two poems here. Age, so just listen to both of them. They're both good. Childish things. Childhood is the kingdom where nobody dies. This is... Nobody that matters, that is. Distant relatives, of course, die. Whom one never has seen or has seen for an hour, and they gave one candy in a pink and green striped bag or a jackknife and went away and cannot really be said to have lived at all. And cats die. They lie on the floor and lash their tails and their reticent furs, suddenly all in motion, with fleas that one never knew were there, polished and brown, knowing all there is to know, trekking off into the living world. You fetch a shoebox, but it's much too small. Because she won't curl up now. So you find a bigger box and bury her in the yard and weep. But you do not wake up a month from then. Two months. A year. Isn't that gorgeous is my mother's place. Two years. In the middle of the night and weep. With your knuckles in your mouth and say, Oh God. Oh God. Childhood is the kingdom where nobody dies that matters. Mothers and fathers don't die. And if you have said, for heaven's sake, must you always be kissing a person? <laughs> or I do wish to gracious and stop tapping on the window with your thimble. Tomorrow, or even the day after tomorrow, if you're busy having fun. He has plenty of time to say, I'm sorry, Mother. To be grown up is to sit at the table with people who have died, who neither listen nor speak, who do not drink their tea, though they always said tea was such a comfort. Run down into the cellar and bring up the last jar of raspberries. They are not tempted. Flatter them. Ask them what was it they said exactly that time to the bishop or to the overseer or to Mrs. Mason. They are not taken in. Shout at them. Get red in the face. Rise. Drag them up out of their chairs by their stiff shoulders and shake them and yell at them. They are not startled. They are not even embarrassed. They slide was a great photo back into their Boy. chairs. Your tea is cold now. It's Jerry. You drink it standing up and leave the house. It's Gerald's girlfriend. <laughs> okay, here's that the part. Ty Daly, I think. This is the one. It was like from Cagney Lacey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Listen, this is a good one now. That's my mother's place out in Quinlan. I am not resigned to the shutting away of loving hearts in the hard ground. So it is, and so it will be, for so it has been. Time out of mind, into the darkness they go, the wise and the lovely. Crowned with lilies and with laurel they go, but I'm not resigned. Lovers and thinkers, into the earth with you. Be one with the dull, the indiscriminate dust, a fragment of what you felt. 
of what you knew, a formula, a phrase remains, but the best is lost. The answers quick and keen, the honest look, the laughter, the love, they're gone. They're gone to feed the roses, elegant and curled is the blossom. Fragrant is the blossom, I know, but I do not approve. More precious was the light in your eyes than all the roses in the world. Down, down, down they go. Into the darkness of the grave, gently they go. The beautiful, the tender, the kind. Quietly they go. The intelligent, the witty, the brave. I know, but I do not approve. And I am not resigned. So do you understand it? This guy is saying, look, I know people die. I know they gotta die, and they're gonna be putting their bodies to the ground. But I I don't approve of that. I'm not happy with that outcome. So what's the answer to that poem? Well, how do we how do we answer that poem? Obviously, you know, we know death happens, and it's a sad time for us here on Earth, for the ones left behind. But we have to remember the celebration and what the answer to that poem is. You may not be resigned, first of all, but you ain't got no damn choice. <laughs> but, but here's the deal. Got, she, she, the person who wrote that poem, I think, needs a little more faith in their in their life. Understand that this is a celebration. Yes, they're gone from here for now. They're only in your memories. But we'll see them again. And when we do, we see them now. And do not let anything in the way of getting up, loving them while they're with you. Absolutely. But also, Tim, there's a second thing. I'm going to add to, add to that. Okay. Yes, I agree. When you when you have loved ones and friends and whoever you love or whoever you care about alive, anybody in this world. You should treat them every day as if it was their last. I mean, honestly, think about that because you never know what it is. Um, but when they are gone, and we're here with that guilt of, I didn't do enough. I wasn't there for them. They wanted more. I should have been. I should have done this. I should. Look. You have to celebrate those times. They that love you. you and, you know, they get the fact that we're human, too. Believe it. They get the fact. Especially now that and if you truly love right? that person, you know, whoever it was, they know that. Believe me, they know that. And if you open your, open your heart and your mind and your soul like you do with, when you pray every day to God and start listening, I guarantee some other people might knock you in there too and say, hey, let me tell you something. Could be a, nickel, uh, a, a, a knucklehead and, and uh, realize that I love you and let it go. I don't want to say that wrong. I know, I did not want to say that wrong. <laughs> so this bread of life that fills us. That's, we're, we're talking about the bread of life now. Let's talk about, let's talk about the emptiness within while we're here because that was kind of the emptiness within. We're talking about that, that loss of a person, you know. And you talk about the faith that can now, the faith of Jesus Christ, that faith in Him and in God and in the Holy Spirit, yeah. that can, we have that faith, we have that knowledge that they're okay. We do have that knowledge. Yeah. Okay? That's where that is. That's a good way to put, put that and get that yeah. in. Because, you know, one of the things you do at the end of funerals, what do you do? You, you go to the people's house and you know, raise a covered dish and you right. eat. Why do you right. do that? To try to uh, uh, celebrate uh, eternal life. I've, there's one thing I want to add on hold, to that. Hold on a second. <laughs> let's, 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 let me get this question answered first. Well, the the human side of it is is to try to fill that a bit of that void, but it's also so you can all be together to make that's that's a lot of it. That's a lot of it. But the reason everybody brings a covered plate is not only to help the people because then, look, those people don't want to have to cook the next few days or they're, they're you know, <laughs> but it does. It's to fill that loss. So you're taking again. We're kind of actually doing what we're not supposed to be doing. You know, like, you're not, don't go trying to fill it, that void with with food and everything else. But I think at that time it's appropriate, you know. I think well, selfish too. Jesus was the one who said it would have been better to, to discuss him than when we're together and we're eating. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. what I was going to... Go ahead. That was what I was going to point in on. Was sorry, the fact I got that you. <laughs> it's the symbolic meaning of the food also. It's whenever you come together, emphasis whenever you come together. It's because whenever we eat, we come together. Whenever the family joins, they join at the dining table. They join to eat together. It's that fellowship, that mm -hmm. understanding that, you know, 
I'm not alone. Well, you know, it's a good excuse for families to come together. Because <laughs> think alone. about it. I mean, if you're like, hey, why don't you just come over and hang out? I wouldn't really call that a good excuse. But. Well, it is. <laughs> think about it. If I call everybody and say, come, why don't you come and hang out? Well, what time are we going to do it? 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. I can do it next week. No, come on over. We're going to have lunch today. All of us are going to have lunch. We're going to have you know, Thanksgiving dinner, 2 o'clock. Oh, we got to work. I want to ask oh. <laughs> You know, we're also, I got you. Yeah. we're also stronger in union. Oh, absolutely. We talked about that a couple weeks ago about how we talked about that actually in Lent last week, last year too, about you know, you can't do this alone. Right, you no. cannot do this alone. Yes, God can be on your side, but for you physically, mentally, emotionally on this planet, your body, all those things, <coughs> you need friends. You need family. The humankind. <laughs> you need everybody. You yeah. need everybody you can have. And if you treat each other a little better, you know, who goes around comes around. Yes, Tim. I was just going to say, people want to do something tangible, too, to, to, to help and to show that they're... Sure, it's a way of, of yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so a way of showing their respect, showing that they're there for them, whatnot. You're right. Yeah. Well, You're right. you suddenly have one last person to help you around the house and to, to, to cook dinner and whatnot. Yeah, that's one of the hardest things is, you know... The uh, empty home after... Well, not that, that, that's hard, but after the 16 years of marriage that I had, was cooking a meal again because... I didn't know how to cook for one person. Yeah, I had the same issue. I always overcooked anyway, you know. I always had a lot of leftovers. I, I mean, had plenty. I mean, look at the hummus that you made. Yeah, I know. And I just and that was a small batch. Yeah. I, I can't, and it, I, would, I would start cooking, and I would set both. plates out for both of us. And it would be like, after I did it, yeah. I, I, you know, of course I lost it. But And even when, when Jared died, my little dog, when I would still get out three, three, plates. three plates. And we just have it. And... I don't know where I was going with that, but <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, it's it was it was difficult. It's difficult. there are a lot of difficulties. It's a in constant death. reminder. It is. I mean, and, but I, listen, here's the deal: you don't want to forget. No. I mean, it hurts. It hurts to lose somebody. It hurts to not have them here anymore. And I miss the people that have gone before me. I miss talking to them. I miss you know hearing their voices and and, and being able to bounce things off of them. And, and you know, my mother and I talked, we talked every day, either by email or by, by phone or by text, every day. So when she died, I mean, all of a sudden, and boom, that was cut off. You know, for days and weeks and months, even years after, I, mean, that's hours. I was still picking up the phone to call yeah. her or text her or whatever. It's hours a day that, 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 are, that, that's just, that habit is gone. It also strengthens your faith though, as well. In another it sense. can. Because you long for fulfilling your life to the fullest to see them again. Well, you have to make sure you're looking the right the right direction, though, because sometimes that depression can take over, mm-hmm. uh, and we can course. try and, we can try and fill that void with things we shouldn't be filling it with. You go, overdoing it on the drugs, you right. know. Think about that. You, you look. Or alcohol. TV, yeah. alcohol, yeah. drugs, TV, sex, yeah. working, yeah. Uh, you know, sleeping, shopping. whatever, shopping, <laughs> gambling. Well, that's that's the interesting thing about being at my grandmother's is she kind of made a little. Corner shrine to, to my grandfather. There's nothing wrong with that. And our family and everything. Nothing wrong with that. But and then at the same time, I'm I'm living around all those photos of of her, of him and everyone else. It's 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 hard. It's, it, well, it's hard, but then you but you don't want to forget. Him. It's strange to see it. Every day. That pain yeah. is there for a reason. You know, you love it's this person, and that love is not. You, it's love is still there, believe it or not. It does cross over that 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 boundary, but it's not the same. They're not there with you physically, and the good thing about that is you because. You don't want to forget, because if you do forget, you forget all of that wonderful life that you had, you're going to have the pain. With pain comes strength, though, as well. Here we go. Pain and joy. Yin and yang. How can you possibly have one without the other? And then you're you're constantly battling back and forth. Amen. How can you appreciate one without the other? That too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, have or appreciate, and, and you know, to really have that wonderful joy of, of you know, being part of somebody's life. Um, yeah, it hurts, but the whole point is I mean, that's what we talked about a few weeks ago. I was talking about about fellowship. You know, when it was talking about a couple of weeks ago, we talked about when storms um, arise. You remember when storms come, and it talked about you've got to have strong relationships with your friends, with your family, with your church, with your congregation, with your co-workers. You've got to be able to, to lean on somebody sometimes because you can't do this all on your own. 
Well, if anything, maybe losing losing a loved one, maybe that can be a learning experience so you can absolutely you know, it's, 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 you know, it's treat the people that you still have with you. It's a motivator. It yeah. is. It can be. It can also be go the opposite direction. Right. It all depends on how you handle it. Oh, I, I mean, I've told y'all when my mother died, I did not leave my house for a year. A year I sat in that apartment. <laughs> that was horrible. Did I make it through it? Yes. Was it the best way for me to deal with it? Probably not. You, you deal with it. How you deal with it? <coughs> I didn't know any other way to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, you, I, you didn't have a family living down the street who forced you to no. get out and have dinner. And no, stuff they didn't. Like that. I mean, Aunt Patsy would come by. Ever so often, you know. Like and she I, does. you understand? I found out my mother died on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I found out my grandmother. Yeah. And that's just. Uh, it's it's an extra. Well, it know. wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional. But it wasn't intentional. I mean, they were gonna. They wanted to wait till the morning where they could all be with me and not do it over the phone and tell me about it. it but still, it got out yeah. and it got to me, and then I was alone. And thank God, I'm gonna say this right now. Thank God for Heath Herbert, who showed up an hour after I found out, because I probably would have ended my life that night wow. if he had shown up. And he stayed there with me for the next three days. Wow. He took care of me and got me dressed on that third day. And put me in my suit and kicked me out the front door to go to my mother's funeral. Amen. Well, I mean, look at the photo from before and after finding out. Is is it's I mean, a life changing yeah. thing? Our mothers, for us, us boys, are somebody is somebody very special. It is, and it's who knows what it is. But y'all have all read that poem that I wrote yeah. about um, uh, this place. This place about my wrote it the night of my mother's funeral. Yeah. If you haven't read it, you haven't read it lately. Go read it. Because when I write like that, I don't write, you know, from the heart like that very often. Because I, don't, I, just, I have to really feel it. Well, I really felt it. <laughs> when I write like that, it's very real and it's very graphic. And, and um, I share that because I want people to know, look, I was there too. Yeah. And I came, I came out the other end. What in so the world? That's your mom. No Hi, mom. <laughs> Hi, Bob. That is, yeah, this is, that's exactly. That's that's, I'm sorry. I'm not a bit, I don't know. It's no, that's quite right. all right. Earlier too. No, you know, that's, she, that's, I told you. I've told you all the stories about I mean, the phone. I mean, you know, she typed yeah, in her name I mean, on the phone. I mean, and we've got plenty, plenty, of, plenty of people here right now for for all yeah. this stuff to go off. So. It, it doesn't feel very empty in here right now, does it? <laughs> no. no. Look, they're always around, and if they're in your memories, they're there. To, you know, no matter what, if they're on, they're around. You just have to you have to be aware of that, and you have to open yourself up to the fact that that's possible, because when you don't. You miss it. You miss out on them. They're here. They're watching you. They want good for you. They're trying to kind of nudge you in the right direction sometimes too, and go, "You're going the wrong way, damn it." Treat it, treat it as a blessing, you know that they're. Yeah, yeah. It is a blessing. Absolutely, absolutely. You know that love we talk about. It's it's kind of it's almost it's almost it's almost like a, a little. Uh, what's the word I want to look for here? Um, it's not oxymoron, but it's it's ironic. Mm. It's ironic because. Here's this love that's coming over from beyond the grave and trying to get us and trying to get our attention. Yet we're over here hurting and feeling the pain of, of, of the loss of love, the missing, you know, all of that. So we're in this pain part and they're in this good part and they're just going like this. You know? Yeah. It's kind of ironic to me. I don't know why that came up, but kind of weird. They're better off than we are. What's going on with the death today, guys? What's going on with all these people around us? Because, you know, they're, everybody's here now. Everybody, are y'all, is anybody here You're awake? You're the one that brought up the, the the poems and everything just then. Well, there's a reason for everything. There's a reason. I didn't bring it up. Tim actually asked about the poem. I believe that I'd like to say something. Oh, well, why don't you say something then, Gavin? I want to say whether you like it or not. Okay. That's usually the case. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but something that has personally brought me a sense of peace when it comes to, aside from ghostly electronic uh, happenings around here. There, somebody is in that, that printer right now or something. That is... Yeah. It's printing something, by the way. Yes. Well, as I was... Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Aside from the ghost in the room. Um, There's more than one. Right. Um, just, I mean, whenever I lost my grandparents and, you know, just recently losing, you know, a former lover of mine, Brandon Renee Courtney Watson, you know... One thing that brings me a great deal of peace is the fact that I, I realize it's not goodbye. It's the time that I have on this earth is going to be nothing more than a drop in the bucket when it comes to eternity. 
So the fact that I just have to wait a meager, what, 80, however long I live. <laughs> if, if we're lucky. <laughs> yes, if we're lucky. But you don't have to wait. But that's In the thing. A way, what don't... I'm saying is <laughs> we need that. We need to see them in person sometimes. I understand. I understand. And there is a sense of comfort that comes from praying and, mm-hmm. you know, connecting with them that way. But what I'm saying is we will be with them again, not only in spirit, but in body and in person. Well, for the most part. You know. Our souls will meet again. They're yes. here today because they were supposed to be here today. Well, obviously. For reassurance. But, but, I mean, someone like Brandon, that, he, he's not going to leave you alone, though. That's the thing. He, he, I'm sure he bothers you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw a picture of him on a, like a Facebook. I saw it the other day too. Yeah, I just I immediately started crying. Mm-hmm. Like I was bawling. I could not hold the tears back at all. And you know, uh, speaking of all these gentlemen, uh, we do offer pastoral counseling here at the church. All you gotta do is get online, and make an appointment. Let me just check and see who that is, please. So anytime. Nobody. We do offer pastoral counseling, and it's great for grief counseling and things like that. It's good to come in and talk about it sometimes and, and bring your faith together in with your life because those need to be intertwined. You know, these are the times that you need your faith. You know, that's the times we go, oh, God, how could you do this to me? And, uh, well, God didn't do it to you, baby. It just happens. <laughs> it's part of life. God gave them. What happened was God took them and gave them their reward. Right. We're just selfish. and think, why did you do this to me? It's not about you. Yeah. It's not about you. Now it's your journey to, to realize what what has been taught. And there was a reason they were in your life, and there there there's a time that comes to an end. Just like you know, T D Jakes he said in my one of my favorite you know ones about letting you know if people can walk away from you, let them walk. Because he says because it's not their their time with you is done. Yeah. Their part in your life is over. Yeah. But it's not time, quite. Well, no, why? Because I needed my, to see my pop the other day. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean the first mean, time I need. You're, you're right. I need a lot of things. I feel that I need a lot of things a lot of times. Like, I need, I have to, I need my mom. I need her. But you know what? I may not be able to see her right now. And God knows, God knows what I need. Well, you've already, you, but you'll put it in, put it want, in your life. Want and need are two different things, though. You, yeah, but there, there's something surpassed that need and want, though. That, right. that absolutely has to happen in order for something else to happen. Well, every, right, well you're right. right. I'm just talking about needing as far as survival. Right, right. But that's the thing. You, you already have everything that you need from that person because they would still be here if, if there's a reason they're no longer in your have. life right then. They're no physically, they're not physically in your life anymore. Mm-hmm. They, you, they're, you're done with them. That part of your. That chapter is over. God, God, Time to move on. God yeah, gave, you can remember that chapter. You can go back and remember it and right, yeah, that happened. Well, that's the thing, that God gave you everything that you need from that person right. because they're no longer there. Right. So right. whatever need you feel that you, whatever that is that you feel you need from them, you, you, you already got it. But you that's simply, the need, to sit, need. You simply yeah. need to sit and that's listen. That's the living need because after that, after well, they're dead. I talk about that just for comfort reasons. After they're dead, though, you know, there's another need that comes, like, such as going to college and going through college. Monetary things. I understand that. My father put his hand on my shoulder tonight. That was another need. Well, that, that, you know, that, that's a huge that need for me. Going through college. That's a huge need for me is, is the embrace, my mother's embrace. Oh, you know. Well, but, but that memory of that embrace. Oh, it's huge. Is, is, that's, that's that, that point of, if, if there was anything else that was needed to be given more, he she'd still be here. Absolutely. I, I agree with you 100% that, that we got what we were supposed to get from yeah. that person. Yeah, but again, we're selfish, and we want them here. Yeah. And, and we miss those things. And like again, if we didn't miss them, they weren't important. But I'm, I'm just trying to... I, I get you. I get what you're turn, saying. Turn it on its head. I understand. I understand. A little bit easier that way, I think. Is it? It... I mean, we can understand that. If, if you can, uh, if logic, you can, logic and, and emotions <laughs> don't, in this sense, don't really... I mean, look, I know my mother well, is in sometimes heaven. They can. I know she's in a better place. I know she, she died probably the way she really needed to die because it was less painful for her. She didn't have to say goodbyes. She was very emotional. You know, it would have been hard on her to say the, the goodbyes to everybody. She left, and she just left. Yeah. She was just taken. But that, in my opinion, to me and to everybody else, that wasn't very fair for us. Although... I'm grateful that she died that way. There's, there's that, that thing a little lady always knows when to, when to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, she um, did that, all right. Yeah. Can we please close out with a prayer towards you? We will do that. <laughs> we will do that at the end. We're doing that. Let's, let's kind of tie all this back in together now. Let's talk about what we were talking about. We're talking about a lot of... We do have pastoral counseling here at the church. <laughs> Don't forget, please. But I, I was going to say... But you did, about, that, about you the did that even before you started church. You're right. I've always been counseling beforehand. That's correct. 
about the sermon. I mean, I, I think I've spent way too much time like uh, uh, satisfying the, the physical. Uh, we all have. We all thing. do. You know, it's something I think I do. That's the whole yeah, point. Totally, totally we all do. We all overindulge in, in the, the riches of this world. Indeed. And the whole point is, that's not where it's at. Excuse my preposition at the end of the sentence. <laughs> that's not where it's at. Okay. So let's tie it all together. The title of the sermon today was Filling the Emptiness Within. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, you know, we had the stories in there about the, the 30 pounds of food every day. And let's not talk about that. <laughs> but it talks about that hunger. That hunger, that the hunger. drive to, to reach the top. Oftentimes, I can't. I can't keep looking. At, I can't. I can't keep looking because it's gonna. Yeah. yeah. The top is not here either. Your success here is your success here. You can't take that with you. Because I mean, God is the only one at the top, and like like I said, that the top is rather lonely. Here and there, by the way. Yeah. In both places. So to fill that hunger within, what do we need? We we need God, really. God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. We need that whatever. spiritual food. We need that spiritual food. And, you know, that's not always easy to swallow. <laughs> no. if, you, if you pardon my pun. Yeah, I because should not. Because we have our own free will. We want to go we want to go do what we want to do. Indeed. And that was a great gift that God gave us. It was. And that's the gift of free will. But here's the gift we also have to know of. He's still kind of tugging at our strings going, look, you still belong over here. And he gave us that gift of figuring that out, that we belong. Because if we didn't have free will, what would we be? Robots. If you didn't want to worship, worship me. Oh, they are. Without that knowledge, we would not know how to use that free will properly. Right. We have many, 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 many gifts from God. And the world could be anything. We could be anything. We could, I mean, God could have created us so many different ways. It's just unimaginable. I mean, I'm grateful for what I have. I'm grateful for all of you being here. I'm grateful for the fact that we can fill our bellies and our souls and our, our minds and all of those aspects with the things that we have here. And we've got, we've got the, the Jesus Christ and God and, and the Holy Spirit that can fill our spiritual hunger. And we have you know, food in our, in our refrigerator here that feeds a lot of people's hunger around here. <laughs> and, <you> well, know, <laughs> and we have the, 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 the food of fellowship and the yeah. food of, of, of friendship that feeds even more and nourishes our bodies. And we have the intellect here, these conversations where our brain is fed, right? Mm-hmm. That's it's, very important. It's amazing. There's so much to be thankful for every day that we forget. The moral is, is stay hungry, my friend. <laughs> the, moral is you're always gonna, the moral is you're always going to be hungry. <laughs> know how to, how to at least satisfy that hunger right. somewhat. Exactly. Know where you got to go. Know where to go. Because if you feel like your life is, is, is empty, if you feel like, you know, no matter where you are, if you're up here or you're down here, if your life is empty, you're missing something. That hunger should be driving you towards something. Exactly right. You should always hunger for education, education, uh, progression in your job you know specifically for God you know exactly. if you have God in your life exactly. if you love have that love of a mutual love with him that hunger will always you be will filled. you will stay on the right path exactly. you've got to stay connected you've got to you know, I say prayer is so very very important and it's That's... a two way conversation it's not just talking okay shut up alright amen to that did you have a special prayer request no, it's just for my Okay, for just your Just for my well, We're going to do that for everybody today. So let's let's go ahead and close it out. And let's let's close it out with a prayer. Okay? Let's go. Right. Let us pray. <sighs> Heavenly Father. Thank you for the gift that we received today, especially for this gift of fellowship and enlightenment. Thank you for oh gosh, I'm so oh. Shush. Thank you for Tim's clum- clumsiness. Yes. That we, without it, we would not know what to do because every other hour, we don't, we don't need a clock. Just every other hour, <laughs> Tim's going to make some noise. Thank you for that. Thank you for our differences, Lord. Amen. Lord, we thank you for our friends and family from the past, from our present, and from our future. May we always remain connected to them, whether here or in the next life or whatever journey you put us on. Mm. Thank you for bringing so many of us, not just us here in the flesh, but those who joined us spiritually today. Uh, Thank you for bringing us together. Everything happens for a reason. And we thank you for that wonderful gift of surprise (laughs) and that wonderful gift of you know, just unexpected things that you give us. It always keeps the, keeps things going Amen you know, a little that. bit better. No boredom here on this earth. <laughs> Lord, thank you for today. 
Thank you for all of this. Thank you for all of your gifts you give us Thank each and every day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, Gavin. <laughs> You're fine. It was empty. Anyway. All righty. It's all good. For you, G- Gavin, get your friend out of here. I told you about bringing them in here. <laughs> what? <laughs> every time you get up, it goes and sits where your butt was, so I know it's after you. Uh, that fly. Uh, All right, guys. I've tried not to let that on the video. Thank you very much. You. It was a good week. Um, I will see you next week. Don't forget, 3 o'clock start time. Um, and try to stay cool. It's going to rain this week, so y'all be oh, here. Well, let's, let's hope that stays. <laughs> I love you all. God bless you. I'll see you next weekend. Thank you, God bless you, too.